Good morning, everybody. Good morning to another beautiful day here in the Philippines. Well, as you see, there is a little vegetable growing right here. I'm underneath some lattice work that Melinda has here in her garden. And in the garden, I have bananas. And yesterday, I actually chopped some of these bananas off. Let me step over here where I'm raising my head up. Yeah, yesterday I sliced some off here. I sliced some off here. I gave them away to the family. Um, and I'm about to slice some more off. You see they're nice and getting ripe here. I seen one that was looking pretty yellow right here. Let's have a look at this one. This is so nice to have this fresh fruit. I'm gonna set the phone here actually right on the bananas. It's gonna be my, <laughs> it's gonna be my phone holder. I tell you, this is such an enjoyment to have your own bananas right here in the yard. Man, that is just beautiful, 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 nice. These are nice large bananas here. Uh, they look a lot like a, a Cavendish, actually. Very nice, sweet, sweet. Mmm, so good. So good. And once a banana tree makes its bunch of bananas, that tree's done. That's why you want to leave the saplings growing out around the bottom of it and let them have a chance to grow up next and continue on and on and on having more bananas. And we're gonna have a plethora of bananas here. So I'm about to cut some bunches off, starting from the top, working down, and share them out to uh, a couple more family members. Yesterday I gave Marvin and Joanne some and and uh, Miller. So I'm gonna continue to share out more to the family here because it's more bananas than we can eat or need at one time. Mm. So good. So good and it's just nice. These have had no kind of spray or chemical. They're 100% natural. So you don't have to worry about any of that. It's 100% organic, chemical free, and enjoy watching them grow right in your own yard. When I first got one Melinda, she didn't think that we could grow any bananas this close. Nothing. Take your peels throw them right down around the bottom of this banana. Uh, when you chop this stalk down, chop it up and use it as mulch around the bottom of the banana and it will actually make fertilizer for your new ones coming on. A little tip right there. But yeah, Melinda didn't think we'd be able to grow these this close to the beach and the salt. And of course the wind did have some havoc on them back when that tropical storm uh, Pine came through. But they survived it because we have some structures and all here that help block she thought the salt might affect them. Me too, I did also, but it actually didn't and we've made it through just fine. Mm, so good. So let's cut some of these bananas loose right here and we will be able to give some away. Start out with this top bunch. I don't wanna cut through the hole little stem sticking out here for them so I just want to cut around it I want to harvest these slowly so the bottom ones aren't quite as ripe as the top bunches just yet and try to avoid dropping these on the ground and bruising them operating one hand show here there we go beautiful Isn't that nice? Just look at that. Very, very beautiful. And let's cut another bunch off here the other side. And then, you know, that just heals over. And these that are still ripening over the next couple of days, we can harvest them also without doing them all just in one big move. And actually, if I had started harvesting a little sooner and just let them ripen on the table, it would have been a little bit easier to distribute these out. They wouldn't have all kind of like what we call vine ripe so soon, you know, um, right on a tree. Yeah, is that saying, is a banana a tree or a plant? Everybody wants to argue it over all the time. Tree or a plant? You want to know? Just look it up. There's experts out there that will tell you, look at that. 
Look at that. That is just gorgeous. There's many more. Many more on here. So, got uh, there. And then right behind that, coming along here in the near future, is going to be more right here. And we got more still on other trees as well. So, I'll share these out slowly to people here. Let them enjoy them. Our channel here is more of a lifestyle channel than a house build channel and it's really enjoyment to have this lifestyle to be able to live right off your own property even a small lot you want you go mark take those home with you later at lunch Salamat. uh i'll cut some more hey june Take those home with you later. I'll cut some more over here too. Uh, do I? Yeah, here, Nard, take these home with you later. Yeah, I want to give out, share to these boys. So it's a nice little lifestyle you see here. We you got the red okra and the local okra here. All these different uh, spinach, everything going on right here. It's nice, nice, nice. Melinda harvests that right out of our yard. We've got all these beautiful chilies here growing everywhere. Lots of chilies, lots and lots of chilies and of different kinds in other places around the yard. Some of this okra here, she's letting go to seed right now. So that's the reason it's up big. Got some young papayas going here. So some of you may or may not remember our drain line for our washing machine. And this is the way that we repurpose the water coming from it you can see it's a drip line right there dripping all along here for the garden and at the same time it keeps all of this moist down through here so we're not doing laundry like every single day so it's not like every day it's saturating the ground here it it's just on the day that we do laundry maybe twice in a week and that keeps that all moist right here she's got um, ginger growing in the ground right here as well Looks like she's got a little young papaya right there going, but you see this is all ginger growing in this area here. There's just plants galore here everywhere. We have so much malungi, or what some people call moringa. A lot of decorative plants. And these plants, Melinda keeps on propagating off of another plant. She'll just keep splitting them and dividing them and growing new plants. It's just absolutely beautiful. We have some more okra going to seed here. More going to seed here. Then we got some young okra here. Let's look at that right there. Hiding off down in here. Just beautiful. And on the other side of the fence as well, there's a whole lot more growing. Every day as well, we're getting about five to six eggs a day. That is so nice. I'm gonna go ahead and cut a few more of these for Joel and Miller for today. Miller's gone to get some steel, some rebar right now for a project out there at the beach that I'll be showing you. So they've been pouring up steel and stirrups here for the beams. They're going around the top of these columns up here on this roof deck. And they've already made the forms that are going to go underneath the bottom side of them. They got this other form wood. And I'm not going to tell just yet what's going to happen here, but I think you'll find it pretty interesting. Uh, Emmons down here, skim coating the outside of where we poured that concrete up there and made these gable ends. So he's skim coating that side. Marvin's doing the same thing over here on this side. Joel's tying some steel up. Uh, well, that's that little wall they just poured up here, right over the top of the doors. That'll get finished out right there uh, probably do a little finish on it after they do a little concrete pour above right up there see Nardo's up here doing a very good thing man he is cleaning up I'm proud to see him cleaning up like that man he's doing a good job too it's going up the staircase here like I say there's always that one more staircase and Ammon's continuing to 
work over there. Finishing out skim coat on that. Staying right on it. Lots of stirrups, fresh lumber, lots of stirrups. Boy, Joel's been busy making these stirrups. coffee a little afternoon coffee and look at this doesn't that just look nice really awesome I'm really happy for this project up here beautiful day here on the beach well we're doing another gabion cage here and I'm sorry if there's a little wind I'm gonna try to shield the microphones the best that I can um, we're getting on out here a little closer to the front. Now the camera's probably making that look further than it actually is. But high tide is just right up over here on the other side of this log here. You can kind of see the high tide line right there. And so we're just from there to here. Um, maybe 20 feet from the high tide line now. And there's a little little berm like right there a little sandbar that the big tides and the waves push it up and kind of making it grow and grow up and it drops behind it here so right here um is probably where i'm going to end the gabion cages on this side this will be the last one most likely and we put a little steel grid down the bottom of it and a schedule 1000 four inch pvc pipe with some steel coming up the center of it and that PVC will stay on there, but it's gonna get filled with concrete. And we're gonna pour a little concrete block right down in the very bottom corner of this and around it. And then from there, we're going to uh, continue filling it up full of stone. And then we'll be doing the same thing over here to the other side. The gabion cages are up right behind that mound of dirt. We like maybe we'll measure out maybe two more and then we're gonna terminate it also. And we'll put also a pole like this. And we've got it set up at the top. And Joel's got his pieces here to where we can run a, a rope around through them if we want to and hang some decorative lights out here at the beach. You know, maybe like some kind of rope lighting or some kind of little lights that hang down, kind of kind of like Christmas lights or something but we'll be able to loop them around. And as well, we can drill into this and set anchors and put solar lights out here along this beach out here further. Some nice bright ones, some really bright ones. And that'll be great too. It'll be great with the community and all, uh, walking through this dark stretch down through in the hall at nighttime. It'll give them a little light, give us some security as well. And we can also put a security camera out here even further as well. Joel, you might have to get something to tap that pipe with. Go ahead.
Mike, y'all need to make you like a safety rail or something up here, man. Especially off this front side right here. So that hatch will be right here. 30 inch by 30 inch. It'll flip up back towards this wall. And you'll come out. And about where you see all that shiny area right there, you'll have to step out and come around and all once you get up here. I think it's gonna be pretty cool. It's gonna have a lip up around it. Uh, he's gonna take some of his purlin and make a box frame and pour around. Yeah, yeah. That's it right there. Oh, you tacked it with the steel too, so it don't move. Yeah, it'll open up this way. And then you can step out over there. I want to know if it could lean back just a little bit against the wall, you know. And then, yeah, the lid open this way and lean just a little bit against the wall. And then you can step out. Mm. Kind of step out and around. Yeah, that's going to be perfect. So you don't have enough plywood for this siding. You need plywood. So if you put this siding on, oh, you gotta put siding there and there. So what we need, we split one sheet. Huh? How big are they? 14. Yeah, and we're gonna need for up here too, so two sheets. I'll go get that. I'll go, yeah, I'll go get some plywood. Couple sheets. Pour it then. 